Let's go. Let's jump in. Okay, so I'm recording Bruno 321. We're live and I am excited to be with you here. Um, I want to say my friend, even though we've known each other for a very short period of time, because uh, whenever I meet people that are doing things that I uh, admire and, and look up to, it's always it always feels like a friendly conversation. So, uh, so thank you for making some time today. Yeah, thanks to you. I'm glad we can call each other friends. Yeah, right. Sure. Bitcoin allows that to happen to some extent. <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I usually start with around that point around where we first met. I think for us, it was probably a couple different ways, but more recently, Diego and, and RSK, Gabrielle, and these guys, I've been kind of going down that tunnel and, and uh, was telling them about, you know, some of the challenges that I've been thinking about and, and whatnot. And, and they they eventually this this rabbit hole led to you. <laughs> So I kind of feel like I'm in that final scene of Matrix. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But no, Bruno, so really fascinated. So, I, I, you know, I wanted to get into your project and all that. But before we do, I wanted to capture really kind of your story. Uh, Idan, who I don't know if you know from Sovereign, recently shared his story. He went back like a few, you know, his grandparents and grandparents type of deal. Um, other people start with their first job. Um, so feel free to kind of take it from wherever you want. Um, you know, if anything comes up in between, you need me to pause it. I can just pause it as well. Like this isn't live or whatever, right? So we can, uh, if you need to run some errand or whatever. But anyway, so Bruno, just really uh, excited about capturing your story. Okay, great, yeah. Well, I don't know where to start exactly, but I'll tell you um, a bit about myself. Um, I'm from, I'm currently, and I was born here in Neuquén, uh, actually in Cipolletti, right next to Neuquén, in the Patagonia in region in Argentina, uh, which could be kind of interesting for some of your viewers, because it may sound something like kind of rare or like a, a, an unknown region, uh, even if many people have uh, heard about Patagonia, like more related to mountains and lakes uh, than to, to Bitcoin or blockchain, no? But well, it's happening, it's happening. Uh, and uh, we're working uh, on our project from here um, uh, in Defiant, which is our project. I don't know if we've mentioned it. We're uh, pretty federal. We're all widespread, not only in Argentina, but also in other parts of the, of the world. And I'm, I'd say I'm lucky of being here uh, in, in uh, Patagonia. Uh, so, well, uh, my background is in telecommunications engineer engineering. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't study uh, here, but in, in Córdoba, um, more to the to the northern region of Argentina. And well, then, then I got a master's degree in, in photonics, in photonics engineering. And that cool. led me to, yeah, that led me to to work in the um, in the um, photonics channels modeling uh field and i worked for a for a really really interesting and successful nowadays company that was born here in argentina which uh produces uh, designs and manufactures um tr optical transceivers actually it's called uh, clarify if i if i may mention it then it was bought by infi and then infi as you may know was uh, recently bought by, by marvel and uh, so that the pretty much means like they, uh, we were doing things pretty well at our time. And we designed some of the fastest uh, optical transceivers uh, of, of its time. So, well, it was, it was a really, really nice place to, to work. And there I got acquainted to, to Bitcoin because of course, as you may know, in a, in a room full of engineers, Bitcoin couldn't, couldn't be uh, unrecognized when it uh, not exactly when it was born, but after the first couple of times it got the, the, the news and, and it got some kind of fame. So then I loved the idea, actually. As what what year were you in now, Bruno? Sorry, what year are we in now? So, like, sorry, when you first kind of came yeah, across that it? Was, that was more or less um, 2013, I'd say. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then I was I was I was single. I I got a more or less nice nice salary. I could buy a bit of bit of, of BTC uh, with uh, what I could spend of my of my salary. 
And then for some time, I, I did some other, some other things related to personal projects and also work, but I, I, and I just hold it for, for some time. I, I didn't have too much to do like in the professional uh, aspect with, with either Bitcoin. Of course, I, I witnessed the, um, the, the birth of, of Ethereum. Um, I bought some, some ether as well at, that, at those times and everything, it, it, it blew my mind as it could have happened to you. Not after BTC, after Bitcoin, you would say, well, nothing can blow my mind more than this. And then Ethereum came and then also other projects. And so um, then I started working more related to the software engineering field. And some years, uh, some years ahead, um, I'd say around 2018, uh, we became more interested in, in also, also started working in the development of, of some projects related to, to blockchain. In 2018, you said? 2018, yeah. Yeah. So I just, before we guys get into the projects that you got into, I'm really curious to know a bit about, I guess, before even Bitcoin, what your maybe relationship to money was. Uh, you know, you did say that you're from Argentina. Um, and I don't know, maybe for, because I think a lot of people, um, they kind of just think Bitcoin's like this niche investment. They don't really understand things like inflation, at least from my experience. I used to work as a financial advisor a very long time ago and spent a lot of time with families, you know, across their kitchen table trying to explain money and, you know, really to realize that I didn't even understand it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but curious, like, you know, having, I guess, you know, from being from Argentina, uh, yeah, what was your kind of, did you even think about it much? Was it just, oh, you had a good job, so you didn't care type of deal? <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah, like you may know, um, here uh, living, living in, in normal daily, everyday life here in Argentina, uh, you can't be completely, completely foreign to economical or financial matters. Um, because you need to, to know here, you're used to dealing with inflation and talking about inflation all the time, devaluation of the currency and the news speak about those, those topics every day in TV or in general media. So you are a bit acquainted mm. to it. Actually, uh, something that, that struck me when I, had, when I was uh, 16 years, no, 14 years old, was a big, big financial crisis uh, in year 2001 here in Argentina. Um, so we, we had you couldn't you couldn't withdraw withdraw money from the banks and many banks uh, crashed and they, they closed. It was something kind of you could compare it to what happened then at a global scale in two thousand and eight. There were there were bailouts for banks as well and people people lost lots of lots of uh, of money like normal people you know you me everyone lot uh, lost great uh, a great part of their of their deposits so already from my early uh, younghood you like here in Argentina everyone everyone knows something about about money even if it's uh, wrong concepts you you already have an idea of the role of banks um, mainly because of things that that have happened in our recent history and we've like really lived them uh, in our own flesh but coming back to my to your question about my own perception of the uh, of money i think that leaving what i just told you aside i i had like this uh, this idea of okay i'm a i'm an engineer i've got a more or less good i've got a good education i'll be mm. able to work and uh, have a salary and not care too much about how can i do for instance in order what can i do in order to um, avoid that my salary loses its value from one month to the next one, which is something that currently happens here in Argentina or in many other countries as Venezuela mm -hmm. and countries with being uh, large inflation. So um, yeah, I, I thought that I wouldn't need to, to care too much about it, but I was wrong, of course. <laughs> or <Yeah. laughs> I, I perceive it nowadays that I was wrong about it. 
But what was your inflection point, I guess? Like, at what point did you start questioning that belief? Because, you know, like you said, you were comfortable, right? And comfortability usually yeah. doesn't lead to questioning, like, deep questions, right? It's usually when you're, like, <laughs> under the gun. Completely. Yeah, completely, completely. Me, personally, um, I, the, the, as, you, as you put it, like, comfort and being in a comfort zone, it's not really comfortable to me, you know? I'm... I'm constantly trying to to get out of the comfort zone and break uh, the, 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 my scenario which leads me to, to this lack of motivation sometimes or when I feel that I'm that I'm kind of lagging lagging behind mm. I try to, to break through there and and get out of the of the comfort zone so um, then I once in 2015, um, we embarked on a trip with two friends of mine. Uh, we got a, a track and we drove from here, from Argentina, all the way to Colombia, to the Caribbean, Whoa. And, uh, and and back. So we we got we like crossed, I'd say, the more than ten uh, Latin American countries. And I oh, wow. I tried to use a bit of a bit of Bitcoin there, also for paying for some for some stuff. During hmm. the trip, and uh, there you start uh, also getting getting in touch with people from many other countries, hmm. which some of them were suffering the same the same issues that that we were suffering here in Argentina. And so we, I started thinking that okay, maybe this is not an issue that only Argentina, due to the, to the politicians or the or the government are suffering, but but it's a matter. It's a problem that most countries suffer. Maybe mm. let's say third world countries mm. suffer, and so there's there's a lot of uh, a lot to be done there. Also, having Bitcoin and blockchain in mind, also uh, accompanied by the the, the, the consequences of uh, the 2008 crisis, and. Uh, it all started like falling uh, into place of the mm. of the pieces, and uh, yeah, suddenly I started also comparing myself, which, as I told you, I, I tend to to get out of my comfort zone all the time. I started comparing myself to to people that that kept working as I would have done if I hadn't taken some of the, the decisions in my life, and I'd say, okay, I would still be earning this much uh, money, which also here, because due to particular reasons of Argentina, if, uh, if you convert it to, to dollars, it's every and every and every time uh, less money if you take dollar as a stable as a stable asset. So there were many things that that thought that led me to, to think, OK, I need to be a bit more aware about the financial issues and about Oh, money, what is money, how is money or value created, um, how can sa suddenly, I don't know, central banks uh, create money out of thin air, and uh, why can't we create money, okay, are we creating value here, are we creating a currency, um, think about Bitcoin or, or blockchains, so, well, it's a, it's a fascinating uh, world, and I see that to one of the main uh, fields that's going to change the world in the next decade or so, I'd say. And I want it to be in, you know. Crazy, crazy. Okay, so how do you... Okay, so and that is kind of brings us to the, you know, the uh, real point of this show, which is <clears throat> uh, my... So I, I, the one thing I try and not avoid, but like the thing that doesn't interest me is the price. Uh, it doesn't interest me when, you know, two days ago when we were at an all time high, it doesn't interest me now that we're, we, there's a pullback, um, mainly because the price is not even a function of the protocol. <laughs> and what mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by are the builders, uh, the people who uh, are building on Bitcoin, <laughs> you know, people like you who, like I said, who see more than oh, you know, it's gone up 10 million percent or whatever in the last 10 years, like that, that, um, that see a reason to, you know, kind of devote their life to this thing. And, and my goal really is ultimately to inspire more people to, to do that. And then that's kind of why I'm doing this. So, um, so what, 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 so how, what does your story look like when you say you want to shift gears and go into Bitcoin? What is, how does your mind work at that point? <laughs> 
Oh, well, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's a decision that actually, it sounds, it sounds pretty, pretty, um, you know, like big uh, when, you, when you state it like that. It's not that much like that, you know, for instance, um, I, I started as, as many things just by, by doing a hobby, a hobby project here. Um, I'm, I'm a developer, so I could start like putting some code into, into place, starting some small projects, uh, entering in a hackathon, which is not really, if you're used to the, the scene in the United States, in Europe, in, in India probably, or in Canada, um, hackathons are really a common thing. Here they are not, but I could luckily uh, go uh, get into into some into some of them. Actually, one was related to vintage, so I could like kind of pitch and start a project um, that it was kind of like a, um, like a um, uh, fundraising uh, platform using on, on Ethereum. And then I got somebody from a from an institution uh, partner that got interested and bought us the the project. Actually, well, they they, they contracted us the, the the building of the of the project, the design, the development, and so then we we saw okay now we were I I was I already had a, a software factory at that point in the beginning of 2018, and. And okay, we've got our first blockchain project. Look at this. Some of the guys didn't even, uh, the guys that worked with me didn't even uh, know what it was because it was something that, that was not our, our main um, area of, of expertise. But we, we started learning and we started teaching ourselves, which is something that you, that you need to, 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 to do like for, a, major part of your of your day or your week i'd say nowadays not not only in software development but also in most of the of the the study or the work fields nowadays so suddenly we had our first blockchain uh, project and then currently like defiant also if we get to to talk about it at some point it also was born as a more or less like a hobby project but as this as this topic has that that much power and that much drive and that much energy and attention put into it, uh, suddenly small ho hobby projects tend to grow and scale up and scale up and tend to 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 gain most of your attention and of your energy and tend to to become like real real projects. Okay, so yeah, let's let's do that. I mean, was there anything else you wanted to share in terms of like your story, I guess, and like kind of your coming to Bitcoin and, you know, deciding that you wanted to build something? Just curious, was there anything else there? Or do you, do you want to? Yeah, because I want to hear about Defiant. No. No? Okay, no, so let's no, do that. Let's I'm, switch gears. So you, you, so you said what? Um, how did it come to life? It was just a hobby. Like that, that's kind of a... That's kind of, right. That that's kind of a, I think, an important word, right? Um, is is like the word hobby. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice. It's nice because it's something. It's something you don't do for money, you know. Because uh, so when you say something, it's a hobby. You you, you immediately know and communicate that something that that you do because you you wish you you like it. Yeah, it was kind of a side project. Uh, Sergio, the, one of the co-founders of mm. Defiant. Uh, he was a bit more related to to trading and. Uh, here, uh, like uh, as a comment, I got the same the same per per perspective and idea as you regarding the price of the Bitcoin. I really don't care. I just came back from a one, almost one week holiday, and I didn't even because I, I was like up in the mountains and come, going from from a shelter to the other one, crossing mountains. I didn't even have 4G signal. I didn't have internet. Mm. I couldn't even know. I, I lost I lost the all time high actually. <laughs> And so I, when I went back, I said, oh, look, a new all-time high. Okay, now I've already, we're already down in price, but it's not that I care too much about mm. it, you know? So, well, but Sergio actually, actually um, he, he spends a bit more time uh, trading, actually 
we got kind of a also side project uh, which was like a brokerage, brokerage uh, company, a broker. And uh, for some, only for some friends and some little, little uh, small endeavor. And so he came to me and said, hey, you, you've, you, I know that you've done some projects related to blockchain. Here, I'm seeing like every day a growing and growing, growing uh, need for a platform in which you can easily trade peer to peer um, Bitcoin or some stable coins here in Argentina at that time and already still. And uh, DAI was very, very popular because people here, and that's something specific to Argentina also, people are used to knowing how much the dollar, the American dollar costs compared to, to the Argentinian peso, which is something that in some other countries doesn't happen. That's, I, I mean, you, you, you tend to think in your own currency, you don't need to know the, the, the ratio between your currency and the... So, so he, he came to me, Sergio, and said, okay, do you think we could develop something in order to, to match one, one person that wants to, to buy and the person that wants to, to sell? So Bitcoin, DAI, um, USDT, USDC, whatever. I said, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, I love the the, the field. I, we are both into Bitcoin a lot. And so we started it like that. We didn't even define it wasn't a wallet yet. And it wasn't even in the plans that it could become a wallet. And so we started, we just built a marketplace for uh, peer-to-peer trade of cryptocurrencies. Hey, hey Bruno, year, first, maybe, first question, what uh, year? You, what year are you in now? 2018 sorry. still? No, that's... Now you're in, yeah, 20, yeah, no, no, 20, no 2019, 2019. Now in 2019. Yeah. And then in 2019, um, so you have this insight. So just to be clear, when you say P to P, is it like just so people, other people can like kind of cling on to the idea? Is it got, like kind of like local Bitcoins, like Paxful, like a, like a place where you can connect with other people who want to either buy or sell? And it's not like a centralized exchange per se. It's more like a place where buyers and sellers can connect, correct? Yeah, is that completely. is that true? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, okay. And, but but you can do multiple. Okay, okay. Excellent. Okay, okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So so curious. I think by the way, I think that's a very noble place to focus your energy, right? Um, because I I don't want to you know um, divert the conversation, but I told you in previous conversations about my backstory in India and you know a lot of what happened for us there, um, and one of the emerging themes that actually did work. Um, was this P2P play, right? We did see uh, P2P, um, the model itself, be far more resilient um, and far more robust um, in, in the face of, you know, closure of banks and things of that sort. So I'm very, very intrigued in this. Like I'm almost as intrigued in this problem as much as I was in the problem that Bitcoin solves maybe, you know, seven, eight years ago. But I think this idea of bridging the gap between fiat and Bitcoin, doing it in a scalable, decentralized way is an incredible, uh, you know, mission to have right now, right? So so, so with that said, what, what do you guys do? How do you guys, I don't know, find product market fit? Or is it like a like an MVP that you guys are started thinking about working on? Or like, what, how do you bring this idea to life potentially? And, and oh, and then one more thing is well, you said you were fascinated by Ethereum. So curious, I think if I'm not mistaken, you guys are building your platform now on Bitcoin and RSK. So curious also, when did that decision happen? Yeah, Why? sure, sure. Just to, just to add a bit of, a bit of context to, to what I was saying before. Um, why was all this, this demand for, for this kind of solution there? So, because here in Argentina, there are some, some uh, limitations, for instance, uh, in terms of how much, uh, how much uh, US dollars you can, you can buy uh, per month. So people like here as, as uh, local currency loses its value a lot uh, month after month. Here people tend to, to try to change their to swap whatever they, they've got uh, that they don't need for the rest of the month that they can save for dollars. But uh, in during during 2018, 2019, there started to the government started putting 
uh, one limitation after the other one in terms of how much you could buy. And so people started massively without even knowing, I mean, massively up to some scale, you know, but the ones that were a bit techy and could uh, get the grip of it, uh, started uh, buying cryptocurrencies and trading cryptocurrencies without even knowing what they were, you know? You know? So at that, at that point, yeah, uh, in order to, to answer your question, um, we, we had, yeah, we, we didn't take too much of, a, uh, too much time to build our first MVP, which many people loved, actually. It, it, didn't, it didn't attract that much of volume because there were still some things that we, that we needed to, to work on. Uh, it did attract some volume. It had some, some nuances that were interesting. Uh, for instance, you could here it's, it's also quite common to, to get to, to get uh, face to face with, with the other with the other person, uh, with the seller or the, or the buyer in order to do the payment in cash. So uh, you, you can use with defined still currently you can. Uh, use geolocation features in order to find the, 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 the offers that are closest to you because you may still want to, even though you uh -huh. can, you can do electronic payments, you may want to get to <clears throat> get uh, face to face with the other, with the other person. Nice. And so that, that was one of the, of the main, of the main features. And it was really, really appreciated by most of the users, of course. And KYC, is that something that is done, not done? Just curious. Because, I mean, that's like a big sticky point, no, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what, is, it just, is it more like anonymous, like kind of truer to the Bitcoin? It's, or is it more like a hybrid of, you know, just how does that work? Yeah, it's kind of a hybrid. We, we didn't stick to one particular model because we thought that we had a good insight and a good understanding of what our... Um, for, uh, buyer persona or user persona wanted mm. so um, you can you can give the platform uh, as, ma as many um, as much data as, as you want okay instance, you can you can input a, a picture or not you can uh, input your your address or not or your phone or not uh, none of them are needed and just what you need is a, is a username in order for the other people to to, to recognize you because uh, even if you change your username, of course, you the system offers a reputation and your the history of your transactions in order to know if you are a, if you've got a good reputation and the possibilities that you may be a scammer. Even if there's another separate way of of um, of reporting and possible scams. But so yeah, we, we we of course we we like the the user has and controls uh, their data and can give and the user can give the system as much data as they want. We don't ask for too much. There's no such a such a thing as KYC or or anything. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Okay, so carry on. What I guess? So, what's the next stage of yeah. like? Okay, so you guys launch an MVP. You get people loving it. You get you get feedback. So that helps you kind of build a better product. Yeah. Um, you're solving a real problem. But w w what's next then? And and by the way, is this like all like a centralized like on a centralized server on AWS somewhere? I mean, AWS like thing or is this? Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. In 2019, yeah, the yeah, first just, MVP I, and all I, that. Is it more like a like a normal you know like where? Yeah, yeah curious. No, it was like a centralized. Yeah, yeah. The, the the matching of the of the offers was yes. um, was um, dealt by uh, was done using centralized server as uh, as you could expect. The things that there's not much uh, information on on the system in order to completely uh, know who who the the peers were. Just the, the the information needed in order to show the other the other peer the um, information regarding the the, the offerings and the, the sale the, the purchase. Um, so yeah, in that and Bruno, matter, sorry, Bruno, in, I'm also curious how. How did it actually work? Sorry, like this P2P thing, right? So is it like local Bitcoins? Like you said, I guess it's kind of like a classified ads type of thing where you have lots of people with ratings and you essentially go and choose to connect with them, right? There's no order book or anything like that. It's it's like you said, like more like local Bitcoins or something like that. Okay. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So what, yeah. Secure, what, what happens next then? So then, well, then, then it was... Uh, 
it was summer, summer beginning of the of last year of 2020. And so that there was not much happening, you know, here during summer, during January and in February, um, everything is a bit more, a bit uh, more quiet than, than usual than during the rest of the year. But nevertheless, uh, Sergio, my co-founder, uh, traveled to, to Buenos Aires, to, uh, to the capital. Uh, and uh, there he just out of for fun he he got um, he met some some people that was in the in the blockchain community he went to to the bitcoin uh, central headquarters let's say of course official uh, in in buenos aires and uh, he introduced the the, plan, the the app to the to many people there and most of them loved them loved it. Um, they invited us to, to work to their offices there. Then Sergio started uh, talking to, to some people related or that belonged uh, to RSK, which you just, uh, just mentioned. And uh, they started, we started thinking like, okay, but we have to do something together. We um, uh, met the guys from Money on Chain which is a project I, I actually I, I, I talked you know, I talked a lot about it to you last time we talked. I, it's a project I, I loved. I don't know if you've got the chance to, to read about it or see something about it. It's, it's a great, great platform protocol, a group of people, everything. And I'd say that since then we've been working together uh, with people uh, in RSK community and that belong to IOV Labs that manage RSK also, and with people from the Money on Chain community, uh, we decided at some point, thanks to um, RSK support and some grants by them, which is one of the, the, the ways we had to, we had to, to, to support the development of Defiant, we decided that it would be a good decision for us to, to become a wallet because there, there was no wallet for, for instance, Money on Chain's coins, which is like a great, great project, project, as I told you. And it was like, it was a shame that there was no such wallet. And we have the app, we, we've got like, we, we've got the right team to, to, to focus in, in features, but also in UX and UI, which is something we, we really, we really appreciate and we really put an effort into. So yeah, we are all worked together. We com created kind of a task Force a group of work, uh, hmm. not only by us but also also by RSK, Money on Chain, some other projects as well, in order to uh, to, to to start building Defiant and uh, start making it a wallet, not only a peer to peer marketplace, and also we started like uh, integrating many of the features that were appearing in the RSK community, which is really really um flourishing and well now last year 2020 was like it was crazy i don't know i i'd say that it was besides the things of uh, the pandemics and covid and whatever it was a crazy year to us we grew a lot we met a lot of people we started with Gains a lot of, of users wait, wait, wait. that we wouldn't even. Wait, is it still on a centralized server, or is, have you guys moved over to RSK, or some of it's on RSK? Like, can you explain that a little bit? Sorry, um, yeah. yeah, just so if people are wondering. Sure. No, yeah, yeah. It's still currently it's still the the, the matching of the of the the the, the purchases. The let's say mm. the, the offers, <clears throat> the orders are are in a centralized server. Nevertheless, we've got plans of decentralizing it, but we'll have to, to build uh, the, the smart contract system. And, and what, we, what we are putting a bit more of effort um, before that is uh, putting into place an escrow system, which is what we, what we discussed a bit also in depth last time we talked, uh, which is something we really think that will change the, uh, will give a lot, a lot of value to our users. And, and then we'll, we'll decentralize all the, the order matching uh, system, but we prefer to put into place the, the escrow system before. 
Makes sense. <clears throat> Makes sense. Do you mind if we talk about that a little bit? Because I think it's really interesting. No. Um. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So. So. Just to kind of relate back to my our story, right? Uh, and I, by the way, I for people who are kind of curious, I actually did interview Nishchal, who's the founder of WazirX in India. That company was recently acquired by Binance. Um. They kind of grew up like literally they were launched. I told you the story. Like I think a couple weeks or something before the bank ban, you know, or a couple weeks after that, or some before, or after, right after, and they were forced to innovate their way through. And and they built, like I said, a local Bitcoin type of thing. And what they did is they, you know, they, they kind of acted as the escrow agent. And so therefore they could um, obfuscate the, or not necessarily have to deal with the rating systems. They could do KYC centrally and they could act as that party. And so to me, and, and the, 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 the idea of escrow has always been really close to my heart because, you know, even as someone who's like kind of been, um, a community builder, if you will, right? In India, Canada, like I, I've always, <clears throat> excuse me, tried to like focus on community. Um, there's always like people that are kind of the anchor points of communities. And I've always felt that those people could be used as like trust points for people to connect, buyers and sellers to connect. And and that's essentially what Wazirx did as a company and did it artfully, did it very nicely. And I'm not going to lie, like I've, I've been I've been kind of thinking about this idea more and more is, is that like, how do you even decentralize that? How do you decentralize the existence of, let's say, of a Wazirx or an Uno coin or just a company? And can you just empower, you know, people like the community to become Uber drivers or, you know, escrow agents, if you will, in our case? Um so it sounds like there, the, you, you, you were, because you were mentioning to me a very, very interesting open source project. What was the name again? Are you able to mention it or would oh, you rather not? Uh, no, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Kleros, you mean Kleros. Kleros, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you, can, do you mind just kind of even just telling me again what you shared with me? Because I thought that like that literally just blew my mind that, that people are solving that problem, but doing it on the blockchain. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, Kleros um, is a genius project. It's it's great, and they not only not only deal with the issue of uh, escrow and everything related to to putting in place uh, an escrow in the in onto the blockchain, but they've got the. I think that it's not really their motto, but it's like their core. Uh, idea is that of decentralized justice. Yeah. So they, I don't know. I, 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 I don't even feel that I'm, uh, that I'm, I don't know. I know uh, that much about their project in order to, to explain it to you. But uh, what I could tell you is that they devote their time to think and develop also and develop and put it, putting it uh, out for the community, a system that's, uh, that brings justice to many uh, things and, and uh, possible problems that may arise into everyday's lives. One of them is this uh, thing of the, the, the escrow. So they, they've got in, in Ethereum, they've got a system of jurors that are people that they, to become, in order to become a juror, you need to 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 have some of their tokens, which is the Pinacion, PNK, is the the ticker. So they've got a system in which you may be elected uh, in order to take to um, rule on some about some 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 sort of disputes that may arise among to different people, which you don't know. So of course, everyone's represented by their their Ethereum address. Of their of their wallet, so it's it's a system that's really really interesting for lots of cases. Here in the case of the of the escrow, it's like what I was about to, to tell you before. Even if there may be things that we there then there may be people, for instance, that are trustworthy and that you may think of them as possible escrows, which because they've got a huge and uh, very good reputation, you could use that reputation in order to, to prove that they won't uh, hurt or they won't, you don't want to lose their reputation. But actually the magic of, of blockchain or of Bitcoin in its origin is to invent, to come up with a system in which you don't need 
to to put that trust or deposit that trust uh, onto somebody, any people, any person. So in this case, Clearos was what they do with their with their escrow system is to facilitate this. You can, for instance, let's speak because Bitcoin is something apart. Let's talk about EVM um, systems, which could may could be either Ethereum or RSK, which is EVM compatible as well. And we've got in Defiant, we you can you can uh, you can connect to Bitcoin, also Ethereum, and also to RSK network. So let's talk about Ethereum, Ether, or RBTC, which is RSK's native token or any ERC-20 token as DAI, USDT, USDC, dollar on chain, by, by money on chain, whatever. If I want to, to send, if you, you do, we don't know each other, and you say you want to sell 100 USDT, and I want to buy 100 USDT in exchange for whatever, for $100, US dollars. So, Using defined, we can uh, we can uh, our our orders would would match there. We can chat with each other. That chat is encrypted, by the way. And whatever we can exchange, whatever information we we may want to exchange, in order to be sure that we will both receive whatever we want we expect to receive. And once we start the transaction, because we feel comfortable and confident that we want to go on with the transaction, you would send. Your, your and all of these will be completely automated via defined defined uh, you will send your 100 usdt to the escrow you don't need to know anything about the escrow just that you will send it to a safe place where the the the, the magic will, will happen and everything will work as, as supposed and once you say i will i have paid you via wire transfer let's say via paypal via whatever you just say okay yeah the guy the guy paid me release the, the 100 USDT to him. And I will receive the 100 um, USDT in my, in my own wallet, and that's it. Of course, there are, there are plenty of cases that may arise there. You could, you could ask me, okay, but what if I, I get the money and I don't say that, I don't push the button saying you've paid me. Okay, there are plenty of cases, but the guys by uh, the guys of uh, Claros have thought of, thought about all of these um, these uh, possible scenarios that may arise, and there are plenty of, of ways of solving the, um, the, the 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 possible issues without having to raise a dispute, which would be the case in which we are both um, voluntarily saying no. The other guy is wrong. I want, in your case, would be I want my USDT back, or in my case, I would say I paid, I paid the, I made him the wire transfer, and he didn't, and he didn't say the escrow, he didn't tell the escrow to release them to me. Oh. In that case, the dispute would arise, and there would be a system of jurors that will rule using evidence that both you and I can provide, in order to, and the, the jurors would uh, solve the dispute ruling uh, according to the evidence that we've both given to him. Okay, hold on. How, how do I know those jurors are going to be impartial? Like the first thing I'm thinking is because if I'm up against a big potential, you know, guy, girl, whatever, then the first thing is, well, what if he's, you know, gamed the system and he's stacked the uh, the jurors with his five, you know, family members and his three best buddies or something? Yeah. <laughs> No, first of all, first of all, we don't know who the, the, the jurors are. Interesting. So the jurors don't know you, you don't know me, I don't know the jurors, and, and nobody knows. Uh, <laughs> okay, anybody. okay, okay. And this, this is a system that, as uh, it becomes bigger and uh, there's more in, in stake, uh, it becomes safer. Because um, there's, a, I mean, like you as jurors, for instance, um, we could we could use a system of three jurors, and there's this, there's the and this is the magic and the, the, the really the nice thing of what Claros have come up with. But if you are a juror, you don't you don't know the other jurors either. 
So you can't, you can't um, talk to them and decide that you, the three of you will try to uh, cheat me, for instance, because they talk to you and you will split the money that you, that you got from me. None of, none of you can, can talk to, to each other because you don't know who the other, the other people are. And also what happens if I'm, if me, I'm a juror and I, I want to go against the, the odds, against what's reasonable. If I, if I, um, I have to put uh, tokens into stake in order to become a juror because I will also be paid in tokens once we've ruled uh, accordingly. But what happens if I rule if my ruling is not, if my vote, let's say, is not um, aligned with the other jurors' vote, which would be something reasonable if we all vote alike, I would lose money instead of winning money. So I've got a motivation to rule or vote as, as uh, it would be expected. This is, I yeah, know, okay, I, I see what you're saying. No, but this is insane. Uh, okay, wait, but but if we just kind of get down to the ground level, though, of like, that actual transaction happening, I, let's say, um, let's say I, I sent you the USDT, but you haven't done the bank transfer yet. So first of all, I assume that the USDT would be waiting in some sort of smart contract or whatever, right? It's not even released to you until, okay. you know, all the jurors or whatever jurors say it's, it's, it's able to. Um, but secondly, um, my, my, my main question would be around the bank transfer. Cause like, that's the piece that gets wanky, right? Like with Bitcoin stuff, it's like, it's open, it's clear as day, like what's happening, what's not to some extent, but with the bank side. So are we saying that the jurors would say, okay, you know, Bruno, send us the, the screenshot of the, you know, the bank like wire is that is that the kind of stuff these guys are doing and and if so like are, are these people like forensics experts like how are they able to tell whether this is real are these people just doing it as a hobby i mean you know what i'm saying yeah they've got they've got a um, for instance uh there it's it's uh it's related to how and how each of the, the, the projects or whoever are applying these systems are thinking of uh, integrating them. We, for instance, of course, we, we still know that we'll have to, to, th to see how things go and what's best for the jurors and for the users. Uh, one thing that you can do is to leave a, a, an open channel between, between of chat, for instance, between the users and the jurors in order to not not an open channel, not a live channel, let's say, but to, to allow them to provide multiple uh, instances of the of the evidence, for instance. You know, so in this in this uh, in this way, the jurors can tell, okay, uh, give me a give me a, 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 a whatever a, scre a screenshot of the of the bank transfer. And then you, they could, they could uh, face the the other peer with this. Okay, we've got a, a wire transfer uh, here. Why? How could you prove that this is not a valid wire transfer? And so the other the guy could tell you, no, that's not the real wire transfer. Look, I'll show you my account. That doesn't that didn't even get to my account at, at any point. And well, I think that there will be plenty of uh, nuances related to each particular case yeah but already without without entering the the, um, the specifics of each of each case what you can what you can already one thing that already from the beginning gives give our users a lot of of uh, tranquility is that they know that the the escrow that's not controlled it's a smart contract as you said and it's not controlled by uh, the the other guy, and, but it's controlled by a system of people that are motivated to act um, transparently. So my funds are going to be held by the, the the this contract that's the the escrow, and the jurors want to act accordingly. And uh, let's say. Um, I don't know, like as expected, 
and and trustfully because they also want to get a bit of a fee that we, we they're going to get if uh, a dispute arises and is solved in this way cool well i gotta dig more into it but it sounds fascinating uh yeah um yeah. Okay. So I guess in terms of, uh, so your project then, so we, first of all, the, the website, I usually ask me the end about it, but just curious, what, what is the website again? Defiant? Defiantapp.tech. Defiantapp.tech. T-E-C-H. Beautiful. People can go there and, and, and wait, so it's an app uh, for Android, not for iOS, right? Oh yeah, or it's, it's for both, for, both. For, for Android and iOS. And people can find it on the Apple Store and Google Store as well, or yeah. Well, currently, there's a in order to in order to to install it in iOS, you you have to install it via TestFlight, which is the 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 official platform to to install some some apps that are let's say in beta. It's not that we're in beta. It's just that you know, as with with cryptocurrency stuff, uh, Apple in this particular case was a bit more more meticulous with some some things we are uh, we are um, building uh, establishing our company not in Argentina and somewhere else so we still have to finish those but it's all a matter of paperwork and bureaucracy if you go to our website there you've got both links to install it either in iOS and in Android and there's no web application, right? Like, or can people also access it via, like, the, just like no. a normal browser? No, we've got a we've got it's a cool. version. We've got a version that we use ourselves that for desktop, and we we know that we will probably release uh, both ver uh, desktop and also web version. It's just that for the time being, we are not that of not that much of a large team, and of course, developing takes a lot of time and maintaining also takes a lot of time. So we prefer not to have got that many products in order to maintain. We also have a active active support in our Telegram groups and well, it's a lot of, lot of work as you may know. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. And in fact, in India, we saw a trend recently a couple of years ago where massive, massive companies, for example, Flipkart, which is like the Amazon of India, they don't even have a website. <laughs> <laughs> they literally just have an app. It's like, yeah. okay, that was a paradigm shift for me thinking. But then if you think about like how much time you spend on your app, on your phone rather, as opposed to how much time you spend on, you know, in front of a computer, it's pretty, pretty insane. Um, okay, I, I get that. Uh, what What's next, I guess? Anything else you want to share on in terms of Defiant, the project? I mean, it sounds super fascinating to me, you sure. know, Um Mm -hmm. Anything I'd else like you want to, to share like on, to, on that front? Yeah, I'd like to share you a bit of um, about our, our view, what we what we would like to become for our project, also Please. our military roadmap for this year at least. So, uh, what we'd like to do with Defiant is, okay, we, we were born from a real need. We we were born or to allow users that wanted to buy uh, meet users who wanted to sell cryptocurrencies and that was something that improves their lives. So we'd like to following that path to um, be the the first wallet for a lot of users, mainly in Argentina and not in Argentina, also in Latin America at, at least in the beginning. And why not in many in larger part of the of the world. So we are constantly trying to do things simpler and more comfortable to our users. Because as you may know, you've been you've been involved in the community for lots of years already. Uh, the onboarding of the users is one of the most critical parts of all of this. You, you've got experience in, in that. So we, I think that we've come a long way already during this last year, but we've got to improve a lot more as well. So we are constantly trying to think of how, how to evolve, how to eliminate one step from this process to do it a bit easier to send, a bit easier to buy, a bit easier to exchange, to swap, to whatever, all the things you can do um, via Defiant. Um, we are, um, so we are integrating lots of new features uh, during this year. We 
currently you can buy and sell um, cryptocurrencies for fiat in some countries in Latin America, but we are but we are already we are already integrating a partner in order to allow allow on ramp and off ramp, so buying and selling for fiat all, all across the world, which is something we were really wanting, and so we think that mainly with this um, bullish season that's coming, plenty of people will want to get on board. We're gonna get buy their first Bitcoin, their first stable coins, whatever. And in those terms, we are also uh, really, really bullish uh, regarding this uh, escrow integration, which will be out in the first quarter of this year. And uh, well, we expect to, we've got a milestone in our minds that will be, that's to have 1 million users for the end of 2022. So we're working towards it. We'll need to get plenty of people on board, but it's not for our good, for, but we think that it's for the good of all of their financial, financial freedom of all of them. Yeah. Hey, but Bruno, have you heard of AirTM? Yeah, sure. You've heard of AirTM? So uh, at Unocoin, we did a tie up with them, like in the midst of all this craziness over the last few years that happened, we we kind of uh, did a collaboration with them. I told you about the Wazirek story. I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, respect for local Bitcoins. And I've interviewed Ray, uh, the CEO of Paxful as well. Um, so I think, I think we're all kind of on the same team trying to, you know, solve this problem, right, at, from different um, angles. Just curious, um, on the the front of just kind of like uh okay first of all i wanted to say that uh like at uno coin now that we're you know coming back to life we went from like i think like the hundred thousand top website on alexa to like the fifty thousand top website over the last two months um because we were practically mm -hmm. gone right with the whole court case and everything but but we came back alive in a big way in 2020 um and I did, like I just told you, this P2P thing is something that isn't quite in our wheelhouse, um, but I think about it a lot. And we have, I think we're up to now 1.7 million, you know, in, like croaching up to 2 million users in India. Um, and so if there's a way that, you know, exchanges like ours can tie up white label, API, I don't know, partner somehow, some way, um, that helps us get to our goal um, of wanting to solve this problem, helps you get to your goal, you know, perhaps even sooner than the end of 2022. But yeah, anyway, so my, my first goal was just to kind of, you know, interview you, uh, get the story out, because um, I, I hadn't heard about it since until, you know, I recently came aware and um, yeah, and just a big fan. And hey, one thing that was a bit of a loose end for me was I was asking you, like, you said you were more intrigued by ethereum than bitcoin so why didn't you choose to build or you know in terms of the future outlook why are you choosing to build on rsk versus let's say you know on ethereum well actually just because because we we see in, in rsk we see a door towards um door to for people that appreciate the value of Bitcoin and what Bitcoin has built and also want to get a way of doing many of the things that Ethereum allows. So the, the, the world of smart contract, program, programmable money, let's say. So I know we, we may mention it for the for your viewers that may know be acquainted to RSK. RSK is a sidechain of Bitcoin, but which is uh, EVM compatible. So mm. their native token, the RBTC, is backed up by by, by BTC. So for mm. for every one RBTC that exists on mm -hmm. RSK network, mm -hmm. there's one one BTC locked, and you can you can use the native two way peg two way peg or many other uh, current pos the possibilities that exist nowadays. You can either change one RBTC for one BTC or one uh -huh. BTC for one, uh, one RBTC. So, so it's backed up. Uh, it's, um, that's a, it's a, you've got all the possibilities of uh, Ethereum, but backed up by uh, Bitcoin. So, so, but why, um, okay, but what's the drawback? Like, let's say Vitalik was on this three-way car right now, right? I've seen some tweets around, like, there is some, 
criticism, right, around the fact that, you know, perhaps this is more centralized. Yes, it's on Bitcoin. So you have all the <clears throat> kind of, um, you know, security, blah, 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 etc. You have kind of that ethos. Um, but then at the same time, there's supposedly only, I think, 12 or some, there's like some technical limitations as to the fact that it's not as, let's say, if you're building something like Uniswap or something, you know, on uh, Ethereum would be more decentralized and therefore perhaps more resilient um, long term. But do you have any like thoughts around that? And and I don't know, have you guys thought through that, that kind of matrix of questions? Yeah. <laughs> no, sure, sure. It's something you we have to deal with every day. Yes, there, there are there are some some features of our scale that could be uh, no yeah well of course criticized or debated but we we know the team we work with them every day in an everyday fashion they are actively uh, working in improving all the time of course every every system is perfectible what you mentioned about the 12 uh, 12 uh, nodes or uh, federators uh, the, 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 their names have been changing during the time. It's, it is quite like that. Actually, uh, recently, some, a couple of weeks ago, the, the, the system by which uh, these federators work uh, changed. And so now they're using a different, a different scheme. But anyway, it's not that, it's not that, any, that uh, any one of them could um, uh, forge the, the system or whatever. Actually, most of them uh, rely on hardware, hardware um, wallets, special hardware wallets whose private keys uh, have never seen the light of day. You know, so nobody has seen those private keys. There are plenty of plenty of, of uh, security uh, measures that have been taken for for us at a level that. We are close to the, the users when we chat to chat normally with uh, final users. It's nothing that you, the normal user, user should be uh, concerned with. You know, uh, we don't see any of the those rough edges that you may see as something really, really important for the end user. We also know the team where they're working a lot and putting a lot of efforts. They're also they. Most of them, the core of our SK come from uh, the uh, information uh, security field. And, uh, you know, for me, yeah, it's, it's a, a every project. It's perfectible, but. So just, just to yeah. kind of like, uh, <clears throat> you know, recap, like the, the project, just in a few, like a sentence or two, it's mainly, so you're essentially solving the problem of fiat to Bitcoin, right? Which is like buying Bitcoin in simple terms. Um, you're solving that problem by using Bitcoin, like by building your platform, I guess you could say on top of Bitcoin, right? Is that kind of a, a like a simple, and, and it's like a, and it's a P2P platform, like you said, like local Bitcoins. Um, but you also said it exactly. covers other cryptos. And so I assume you mean that's probably having happening more on the centralized side of things, but eventually when it moves over to RSK and all that, will those other tokens, like, you know how, um, yeah, yeah. Will they also be tradable and, and et cetera, et cetera. Like, will you be able to, let's say you don't want to you didn't want to go into Bitcoin for some reason, you wanted to buy some Ethereum with your, your um, fiat. Can you do so using your platform in the future? Sure. Hmm. No, no, not in the future. You you can just right now. Hmm. You can you can buy, exchange, swap, and many other things. Uh, both every every token. I mean, I mean Bitcoin, and also every other token in the Ethereum and RSK networks. Amazing. And Amazing. you can also use them, uh, offer them, or buy them in the in the P two P marketplace. Interesting. So it would be not. It would be not only a way of buying uh, crypto, but also it would be a great replacement for Nifty or MetaMask. And we we also have uh, Wallet Connect integrated, so you can uh, you can interact with, uh, let's say, ninety five percent of the of the existing DApps that have Wallet Connect. And so it's a way of not only getting your first or not your first. Uh, cryptocurrencies, but only to have them uh, in your hand. 
and doing doing real things with them sending uh, doing doing payments uh, swapping one some tokens for other tokens swapping tokens from different chains also from different uh, networks swapping tokens from the ethereum network uh, for tokens uh, in rsk network you can do plenty of things Okay, man. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, I'm not religious, but it sounds like you're doing God's work. Um, okay. What, what is the, uh, what's the, uh, so is that all you wanted to share in terms of your story and uh, defiant story? Anything else? I wanted to shift gears into something uh, just to kind of bring it, you know, to sure, a just, just one, one last comment that we are finishing now security, security audit. Mm. And we'll make um, everything, if not most of it, just because of some um, some security issues uh, or some security, let's say, margin we would like to leave. But we'll do everything open source, which is not just yet. But Beautiful. during, we expect that that would happen uh, during February because we know that, uh, you know, first in order to also uh, I, I put it available for possible contributors or people who would like to to enjoy our, our work, but also, of course, for our users who, who would like to to see the code that's running uh, be uh, in their in their phones to be able to inspect the code because we've got of course nothing to hide, so we like users to be able to access it. Cool. Uh, Bruno, well, that was fascinating, man. Okay, so do you mind if I shift gears into that third question then? Or do you want to, is there anything else you wanted to share? No. It's, okay, it's so great. what is one thing that you believe to be true that most others in Bitcoin would disagree with you on? So what okay. is one contrarian no, belief a, that's that a, you hold? A, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a tough one. Uh, let's let's be uh, let's be clear and say to the audience that this is done. This is not prepared. This is real time. I didn't know the, <laughs> the yeah. questions beforehand. No, you know, can pass if, if you don't want to walk into a mine. No, no, sure. <laughs> I want to I, I want to say mine because I want to to hear yours as well. Um, but I'd say um, I don't know if most people would disagree, but I'm sure that. Some people would disagree. I don't see Bitcoin as like the, the, the coin that will change the future forever, forever and that will ban banks and make them disappear. And, and you know that this idea that in five, 10 years time we'll be dealing with a completely uh, new and different financial world. Because for sure, banks have survived, banks and governments and uh, states have survived for centuries already. So they will find a way to survive, and and well, and they and they will probably and they probably will. So I think that Bitcoin Bitcoin has come to change some things, to change the way the way in which people may have access to to finance to financial solutions to financial paths and schemes and the ways of it, of transacting between different people but uh we will continue to see normal banks and financial institutions from past century during this century as well but It'll be nice. I mean, we'll have there will be a solution and a, a product or a service for everyone that that wants it in terms of finance. Cool. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, I, yeah, I, I don't think <clears throat> Bitcoin means the end of you know uh, whatever. Um, I, I think Bitcoin is just like the ultimate measuring stick, you know. And uh, and I don't know who it was. Oh, I think it was in that movie. The was it called The Big Short or something? Where like the guy in the yeah. end, he's like he makes all this money, and he's like right, and and his like you know two buddies are cheering, and he's just like, no, he's like we were right. That means that like a lot of people are going to be suffering. And Bitcoin is kind of that way in the sense that, you know, the more bad things that happen, it seems like the better Bitcoin does. And I think it's a bit of a, a check, you know, in terms of if, like, uh, if you don't believe in money printing and bailing out, you know, your buddies and whatever, whatever, all this stuff that happens, you have a way to just, 
you know, zen out. You can just like uh, opt out and, and do your own thing. <laughs> hey, do you want me to pause it? You got some something to go. Do you, you want me to pause it for no, a bit? No, no, You're no, good? No. Okay. No, no, um, no, no, it's okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so I, I, yeah, you were going to ask me uh, mine. I, I think I have quite a few of them. Of course, of course. I have a, quite a few of them, so I don't want to like take out the whole thing. But I, I would say the main one maybe right now would be relevant considering that we keep breaking all-time highs, even though today was a bit of a, a bloody day or is a bloody day. Um, you know, but it, but, but, but on average for the last like few months, it's been like on a tear. I would say my, my current contrarian thought and maybe always has been that price is the least interesting thing about Bitcoin. Um, I think, uh, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this, this YouTube thing and, you know, whatever this is called, this interview thing, I'm trying to encourage more people to, to realize that you don't need to ask anybody. You don't need to wait in a line. You don't need to fill out a form. There is no Bitcoin office. There's no Bitcoin president or God. Uh, if you know a bit of coding, you have a business sense, you know, you want to solve some big problems, you can, you can jump in and, and do it. Um, so yeah, so that's my contrarian belief, I'd say, is the price is the least uh, exciting mm -hmm. thing. Um, uh, and maybe a second one, if I had to pick, is really like what we're talking about, which is that Bitcoin maximalism, which I can consider myself to be because I, I am a Bitcoin maximalist, not because of um, because I don't believe in the free markets. Like I'm, I'm ultimately a bigger believer in free markets and ideas. It's just that I think Bitcoin's the best idea that I've seen, period. And, and Ethereum mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, and, you know, and I always felt that some of that interest would translate over to Bitcoin, like RSK, like, you know, uh, Defiant is doing really exactly in that way. Like, um, so I would say this has been my country. And, and I think for most Bitcoiners to even, you know, think about Ethereum or talk about Ethereum as heresy, I don't, I, I think they're doing, and then, you know, I had a front row seat to Ethereum, like guys like Anthony DiOrio, I consider him a friend. I don't know if he's, but uh, guys like, you know, Vitalik and Vitalik's dad, they all live in Toronto. So I've, you know, although I'm not in like close contact with them anymore, I kind of feel like I had, uh, like I literally saw my eyeballs, like, you know, the birth of, of Ethereum. And so I've always kept an eye on it and been interested and, and felt like they were doing something exciting, but Again, I, 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 I am super intrigued by RSK because it's like they're taking, I feel like they're taking a lot of the best things that Ethereum has, has accomplished, but technologically speaking, making that possible on Bitcoin. Okay, a um, couple of things. I know we have only a few minutes left, Bruno, um, but just any any trailing thoughts on uh, first AI, uh, the, 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 the notion of maybe let's just clarify, not necessarily like you know, narrow bands of AI, like the Tesla car driving itself or Bitcoin itself or Google, but more so like this general AI, this, this like more, you know, sexy thing that some people think about, talk about um, that might be, you know, two, three decades away. But, but this idea that, you know, Elon Musk of the world can just employ devices, robots that are maybe more capable than, than the average human and do it for like a fraction of, you know, th less than a thousand dollars or something. Um, do you think about that much? Is that, have you read any books along those lines or am I just kind of yeah. watching too many sci-fi movies? Yeah, no, no, no. It's actually a, a topic that, that really, that really interests me. And I think that we, 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 just mentioned it this before starting the recording but i've got the same i've got the same um concern as you mentioned before that is and uh, what will we do with eight billion people uh in the world you know like when we when we start replacing many of the um, of the, the the jobs that we currently have uh, for machines or not even I mean, the machines. It's really crazy to think about machines. We don't even need, need a machine anymore. It's just an instance in AWS <laughs> in order to do all the calculations that you had 10 people doing every month on a spreadsheet, you know, like just just to say. And, uh, but, and, and that's not even questionable. I think that the, um, that for for sure, there 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 are some some proto solutions will will come up uh, in terms of okay um, banning banning some things or making governments to invent jobs out of thin air just in order to employ people. But they those will be really really short term solutions, and I think that it opens the door for the the idea that we need to think. Um, and to, to give us space as a, as a, as, for the humanity 
to think it's that if we really need to uh, be working all the time, there was an interesting project which you may or may not have heard of. Uh, that's the Venus project, which appeared to be I remember in the that that, that movie, the Zeitgeist, Zeitgeist um, from like 20 years ago. I don't know how much. And that they they blew my mind in doing this this question you know, that do we really need to work a lot harshly hardly all the time as a humanity maybe we don't maybe we don't i don't have the the, the answer but it's a question that we that we could pose jack fresco yeah exactly no. jack fresco jack yeah. fresco the guy didn't he pass away recently i heard I he passed so. away yeah yeah, yeah, he was very, very old even. I mean, I heard about him, oh my God, a long time ago. And Zeitgeist, even though I don't think they got it fully right in terms of like, I, I mean, Peter Joseph and some of those guys, if you follow them now, they're a bit. Um, but I think directionally speaking, in terms of at least addressing the problems, uh, wow, that was that was bang on. Um, and But the solutions, maybe not so much. Satoshi picked that one up. <laughs> mm, yeah, true, oh, true. Um, I think hey, that doing yeah. correct questions is, is even better than, than, than finding the right answers. As you're uh -huh. here. 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you know, I used to work for a company, Bruno, named Kwanzer for almost eight years. And the name Kwanzer from the founder came from question and answers. Like if you combine question and answer together and, and, and uh, Jacob awesome. for almost 20, maybe more than now, almost 25, 30 years, they've been building robots for all the major robotics labs. I've, uh, I used to work for them and, and like as a, uh, I used to call they used to call me like an academic sales advisor, this, that, but I was a sales guy. I used to sell robots mm -hmm. to like, but Georgia Tech. IIT, MIT, Stanford, Los Angeles. I mean, you name it. I, I, I've never been to Argentina, wow. but I have been to a conference in Porto Alegre. That's probably the closest I got to you. Um, but I've traveled the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's what it is, right? Like learning anything is just really a series of like asking questions and getting answers. And yeah, so, um, hey man, I, look, I don't want to be respectful of your time. I know we only have a few minutes left. So I want to give you some time to talk about uh, where people can plug into your consciousness right Tw twitter blog i don't know what, what medium what you're up to but if you can maybe share that also once again plug the defiant website just so people have it um and anything else anything else where you want people to you know learn more about stuff you're uh, stuff you're working on sure sure well me personally um i'm not that much um i'm not that much of a of a writer in terms of the social media i don't i don't tweet too much actually i could i could uh, say i'm a writer because last year we we published uh, a book a book that, cool. that me and two two friends of me wrote but it's like it's completely related and due to the the, the, the trip uh, through latin america and that mm. i told you before uh, but i I don't, I don't um, write too, too much in blog posts or Twitter or whatever. I'm just I kind of shy and I, I, I'm much more a listener or a reader than a writer or a speaker. Maybe I, I will become a bit more, more fluent when I want to, when I feel that I've got something like really valuable to, to share, you know. But of course, if you want to um, follow us, you can find uh, Defiant in, in Twitter. And also, if you if you feel like, or if you want to ask us something, uh, you may find us also in in Telegram. Uh, what's the Twitter handle? Medium as well. Bruno, what's the Twitter, Twitter handle? Handle is Defiant Defiant App A P P. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's Defiant spelled the way D E F I A N T. Yeah, guys, I want to make sure I, I got because I know people are going to be itching to be like, I got to check this out. So I want to make sure they get it. Um, OK, cool, man. That sounds super exciting. You know, uh, I was going to say is, is that code is the most beautiful language. So you write probably uh, more than you think. <laughs> and, you know, it scales better. It solves a real problem. It uh, I, I, I actually I'm an electrical engineer, but I'm not a beautiful I'm not a great coder. I got to get over that. I got to learn to code better and just get over it. But I have a lot of respect for people like you. So, um, you know, I'll just keep doing this this and you do that and we'll just help each other <laughs> yeah, sure sure cool man I, I have to learn to, how to code more and more and more beautifully also 
because you you always you always feel that your code could be could be more beautiful. It's true. It's true. Chip said code's a very very beautiful language. Yeah, and it also solves problems. A hundred percent. I'm trying to get my my six year old girl. She's uh, she's loving. Um, you know uh, what's it called? MIT has this thing called Scratch that that uh, Scratch. one of the coin cold card guys told me about. Um, anyway, so I, I she's she loves that. We got a 3D printer at home, and and so she's all into math. Right. So I'm so happy right now. It's I couldn't be happier. But anyways, dude, uh, Bruno, this was awesome, man. This is fantastic. Um, if there's nothing else you wanted to share, I was going to bring it to a close. Maybe just hang out for a few seconds um, afterwards. But was there anything else you wanted to share? Or are we good? No, we're good. I feel that we could we could keep going for like a, <laughs> one hour and a half more. But if we, if we hey, hey, by the way, anytime, eh? anytime, anytime, anytime. Like if you want to do another one next week or next month or next year or tomorrow, I am game right now. I'm really focused. And like I said, especially I wouldn't say this to everyone, but to you, I'm definitely game because I, I can't help but feel that that you're doing God's work. All right, man, we'll bring it to a close. And uh, OK, here we go.